a playlist original. What's up, Superhero fans? Welcome back to Soup's Disputes, the show where I sit down with producer, talent manager, industry insider, and mega fan, Brad Lambert, and we talk about the most divisive superhero topics and the hottest superhero news. Today, we are once again joined by my co-host, partner Twitch streamer and host over there at comicbook.com for Comic Book Nation, Janelle Wheeler. Janelle, kick us off. We got a big show ahead of us. We have a lot Let's get started. About. Yes, okay. <laughs> so I love, we're kicking off this show, first and foremost, with... A Zack Snyder first look at Jared Leto's Joker. Um, this trailer has been confirmed for Valentine's Day. And I actually got into a full blown like yelling match on my on Comic Book Nation about Jared Leto Joker. So I'm very interested what your thoughts are on the first look at Joker and the trailer coming out. Um, and what you're what you're expecting out of this trailer. Let's start with you, Brad. Well, first off, the uh, first look at Jared Leto's Joker looks a lot different than what we saw in Suicide Squad. Um, so I'm I love Jared Leto's Joker. I'm one of the few. Uh, yes. I think he got a lot of hate for whatever reasons. Um, yeah, he was different. Yeah, he was a, a gangster and a mobster, like just a pimp, whatever. Like it was a different iteration of that iconic character. I'm all for it. Uh, I thought he was brilliant and psychotic, and that's who the Joker is. Um, so I'm excited to see more of him. Uh, so that's exciting to me. His look is very reminiscent. Uh, it looks like he has longer hair, which is that of Heath Ledger and Joaquin Phoenix. Um, it also looks like he may be doing surgery or mutilating someone because <laughs> he has on gloves and potentially some like protective uh clothing for his clothes uh and the card itself is covered in blood no surprise there um so yeah I i'm all for it i can't wait to see some more jared, Le jared leto joker and it looks like he's gonna be kind of dialed up even more from the violent and dark standpoint so hopefully we see some of that in the trailer absolutely i i knew that we would be fast friends because I'm a huge fan of Jared Leto <laughs> and I loved this Joker too. Um, so I would like to know your thoughts, Matt. So first of all, I was just scrolling down my Instagram feed and I saw this picture come up on my feed and I thought it was a picture of Joaquin Phoenix's Joker. Like yeah. you can't really see, see like his face, but you can more or less see his design. And I am so excited to see Jared Leto get another shot at playing this character because like you guys, I thought, you know, he wasn't he wasn't really presented in the proper light with Suicide Squad. You know, there was you know, they've confirmed multiple times that they filmed enough footage of Jared Leto's Joker in Suicide Squad where they could have had an entire Joker movie. Yeah. So the fact that that and on top of that, one of my biggest negatives about that movie is the way they edited the film. So I thought I just thought that Jared Leto's Joker was presented the wrong way. And now to see him return to play this character and get another, another shot with Zack Snyder behind the camera. I'm just so excited to see what, what Zack Snyder believes this Joker is going to be. And with Jared Leto, an actor like Jared Leto, because he's an, a fantastic actor. Say what you want about his Joker. Thank the man you. can act. Academy Award winner. So he's with an that, award winner. Yes. With that, with that being said, now that, the, now that we know the Snyder Cut is going to be R-rated, it's time to turn it up with Joker. Heck yeah. It's, it's time to time. turn it up with Joker. And that's what we have in this picture. And we have a trailer coming on Valentine's Day. I could not be more excited. But I think this trailer has to show some elements of his Joker. Some elements of Joe Maganello's Deathstroke. Which we are going to see more of in this film. You know, when people look at the Snyder Cut, they look at, oh... We've, we've kind of seen this movie already, right? Mm -hmm. No, you want to market this as something you haven't seen. Zack Snyder has said multiple times that we've only seen around like 25% of, of the, the total footage that's in the Snyder Cut. So if what he's saying is true, then there's all 75% that you can show in this trailer. So show that. Lean into the things that you're doing different with this version of the movie that you didn't do in the first cut of the film. So totally. th those are my expectations for this trailer. I really, yeah. I really want it to be the thing that galvanizes everyone and gets yeah. everyone hyped. As, as this movie's coming out, you know, it's a month away. 
It's, I'm actually just excited listening to you. I've been up right now. I'm very <laughs> excited about it. And I, I totally agree with you. Um, I will say that just referring my opinion on this, on the, the leak, the photo of Joker, like there is n not enough there to really even agreed see but uh i did see maybe an artist sketch i saw someone actually try to like create what he would look like yeah. through that image mm -hmm. and it was gaunt and creepy and it looked nothing like the one that we saw in suicide squad so for me personally i would like them to maintain a little bit of our original jared leto joker because i liked it so i hope that they can put those two together that's what i hope i, I hope that he can satisfy both parties of this Did, were you look, gonna say something Brad? you know yeah me mentioning on that note of uh the footage that was cut from suicide squad i actually saw those scenes <gasps> i actually saw the scenes that were cut Are and allowed to spill he was the incredible yes. uh i'm i'm not gonna go into details but <laughs> He was he was fantastic, and uh, I'm disappointed it didn't make the final cut, and it it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But it just went deeper and deeper into how messed up, psychotic, and genius that character is. Um, so, if it's anything along those lines, but obviously a different character design and maybe some more development into the character. I'm all about it. Um, we all know Jared is a phenomenal actor. Uh, he was brilliant in the little things. I don't know if you've just seen that movie. Yes, um, so great. So yeah, he's just, he's fantastic. So I want to, like Matt said, I want to see him in the trailer. I want to see Joe Maganello's Deathstroke in the trailer. Uh, and I want to see stuff that gets me excited, that shows me this is not what we've seen before. And it's not the same tone, style, or rating that we've seen before. Yeah. Um, you know, Brandon tweeted out this morning that he saw something of Steppenwolf literally obliterating the Amazons, like that of like Mortal Kombat, Gears of War level wow. destroying. So uh, if it's rated R, I think they're going to lean heavily into that. And to me, that's excited because that's, you know, something we haven't seen before. Yeah, so something I'm all different. For yeah. yeah. And if you don't, <laughs> people have said this several times, if you don't like the rating now or the tone or you don't have to watch it, that's the beautiful thing about it. That's what I keep saying. Save so. your four hours. <laughs> yes, exactly. All right, let's roll it into the next topic. Earlier this week, we got our first set photos for Thor Love and Thunder. I'm like grinning ear to ear about this and the guys are yes. just pumped. Um, <laughs> I'm wondering what you guys thought about everything. These photos showed a, th a totally shredded Thor, which I love. And he's teaming up uh, with Chris Pratt's Star-Lord, which again, he's getting roasted on Twitter. And I don't know. I, I feel like people, we need to slow down fake on tweets. that. Exactly. Don't if people don't understand that. So can we just let you guys know, listen to us, they're fake tweets. Um, and he also has a new look. So Star-Lord has a new look too. I would love your thoughts on the entire look and uh, what we have going forward for Thor Love and Thunder, Brad. Look, you know, Coming off of Endgame, Thor was in not the best physical shape. Um, so seeing these set photos, I was really disappointed because I figured Chris would have put more effort into getting more buff, <laughs> more fit. You know, he that first set photo, I was like, dude, like, have you done any bicep curls since Endgame? No, I'm, I'm totally kidding. He, <laughs> he looks phenomenal. Uh, Chris is not human. Uh, the dude is a, just a freak of nature from a physical standpoint. Uh, he is the God of thunder and he looks incredible shape. His arms somehow have gotten bigger, which is just makes no sense. But the, my, the main point is his physical stature has changed from Endgame. He's back to the fit Thor. So I'm excited to see maybe how much time has changed since, you know, has passed since Endgame. Um, but also it looks stylistically that Thor has found himself. And I think that's really important. He's not of the Asgardian, you know, aesthetic. He's like, this is me. I'm chill. I'm cool in it. Yeah. You know, this is my new vibe. And it, it's very much of like an 80s rock kind of vibe. Yeah. He has the yeah. vest, you know, and he, he looks sure. great. He looks like he yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, he, he just, you know, uh, like, but the cool thing is seeing him with Stormbreaker, 
Like, uh, I'm all for this new look, the new vibe. Uh, Star-Lord has a new aesthetic. That, not so different than what we've seen in the past. Um, but yeah, Thor Thor looks great. I mean, I can't say enough about what this film's going to be. I think it's going to be a blast. That is so awesome. I, honestly, what I was thinking was 80, like, rocker Thor yeah. with the braid yeah. and the hair and... He's just going to take Stormbreaker and like air guitar it. And just... <laughs> but you know what I was thinking? I was like, I wonder if Star-Lord has kind of influenced this. Like, I wonder if yeah. he's been listening to the soundtracks yeah, and like that's what really I was thinking. digging it. Yes. All right. All right, Matt. So give me your thoughts. I love that. So that's first of all, I love these set pictures, man. <laughs> Shout out to the boy, Bobby Holland Hanson, who's putting that work. Yes, trying sir. trying to compete with Chris Hemsworth. We feel for you, Bobby. I'm sorry for what you're going through. And, hey, uh, on that note, on that <laughs> note, Bobby had back surgery in 2019. And it was insane mm -hmm. back surgery. And he has come back like the God of Thunder from a physical oh, standpoint. He's gosh. put that work in. He's recovered. And now he's filming Thor Love and Thunder with Chris. Uh, he's back in Thor's shape, which takes a lot of work. So yeah. a lot of love to my boy, Bobby. Bravo. And, uh, we're, we're sending love and support, my guy. For Yay. sure. Shout out to everyone over there, over there in Australia, just putting in that work. But my I COVID. love these set, I love these set photos, man. <laughs> we have Thor kind of representing the Thunderstrike outfit from the comics. And again, like Janelle, I agree with you. I do think he took inspiration from Star-Lord and listening to like that 80s soundtrack from, you know, the awesome mix of volume three. But um, I, I love these set photos. And, you know, judging off of these set photos, I do think some, quite some time has passed after Endgame. And I just, I love the whole idea of Thor having fought alongside the Guardians for a long time. Like, I really like that idea. So now when we see them pick up in Thor Love and Thunder, maybe a year or two has passed and Thor has been fighting alongside the Guardians. And again, just seeing him compete with Star-Lord, I, you already know the jokes the jokes that are going to be made. So with good. Like the movie's going to start off with like a Rocky style montage of Thor getting in shape, <laughs> pulling the Milano on his back. <laughs> and then Star-Lord is just going to be in the background, like curling, trying to get in shape. And it's not going to be going well for him. I was actually going to ask you guys a question. Um, I saw some comments. I like to read the comment section of a lot of these things. And someone made a little remark about it almost looks like Star-Lord has a little bit of Asgardian armor on his yeah. new outfit. And it it then made me go, wait a minute. So these guys are actually like buddies and pals now. Like, I wonder if the competitive energy is not as crazy. I don't know. What are well, your thoughts Well, I, I do think they're adopting the relationship between Thor and Hyperion in the comics. Hyperion is basically Marvel Superman in the comics and they start off by bumping heads. They start off and they fight and they're super competitive with each other, but they actually end up becoming like the best of friends. Awesome. And in, in the comics, they have, they end up dying together in battle. And it's one of the most badass deaths in the history of comics. But I would, again, judging off of these set photos, I really hope they take that approach with the character of Thor and Starlord by adopting that friendship because their dynamic is just so perfect. And it was, it was still so unexplored coming off of infinity war and Endgame. So I really want to see them dive deep into that and then set them up to have, you know, a really nice, a bromance, a bromance <laughs> across, you know, Brother. their future. Yeah. I mean, if they're sharing their playlists and armor, I mean, yeah, hopefully they're not sharing the girl. What? Anyways, moving on. <laughs> healthy, healthy competition. Healthy competition. Them. Well, we know Star Lord has to start from scratch here. So, uh, to win over Kamara. So, we'll see. All right. Moving on to the next one because we've got to keep it rolling. This is a very packed episode. Tom Holland finally talks about Spider Man 3 for the first time and calls it, and I quote, the most ambitious standalone superhero movie of all time. I'm sorry, I had to put the, a big emphasis on that. That's a bold statement. Uh, he also denied very... the rumors of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield appearing in the film. And shortly after that, uh, the web released that William Dafoe has been spotted on the set of Spider-Man 3 after rumors have been circulating that his Green Goblin may appear in the film. That is a lot to comment on. You can pick and choose where you want to start. Let's hear it, Brad. Brad's ready. <laughs> Look, Tom's on a short leash. <laughs> so I'm surprised he was allowed to say anything about this movie. Uh, the snipers were 
tracked on him <laughs> and he was being watched. Um, Wanda was but, like, you know, target. <laughs> exactly. For, for him to say it was the most ambitious standalone film of all time, that is saying something considering we had a small film called Captain America Civil War, which was a enormous uh, behemoth of a film in itself. Mm -hmm. So that to me, you can't say that. And then two minutes later say Toby and Andrew aren't a part of the film. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, that's a major cap. So uh, uh, I'm calling uh, baloney there for, for Tom Holland, but look, they're not going to ruin it in a variety interview anyway. Um, and we always talk about how these, you know, the talent always denies their involvement with certain projects, especially projects of, of high priority and high level, uh, such as this. So, you know, I'm going to take that with a grain of salt, but it just excites me more and more for this project because he said what he said. Um, we all had our ideas and our, you know, wishes for what we wanted in this film. And for him to say it's the, the biggest, you know, standalone film of all time that's quite the statement and i think the only thing that makes sense for something like that is that of the spider-verse nature absolutely oh my gosh i'm so excited about it i feel like i just want to say you have learned young padawan you like you understand that you're not allowed to say this stuff he's our gem he's our jewel of like telling the truth and spilling things by accident but he's learning uh tony finally taught him in the end that you're not allowed to do that, but I'm very excited yeah, don't about spill it. it. You can't spill the tea. Uh, and you know what? I respect it because it's, it's part of this. Um, and also Willem Dafoe. Like, Will I William mean, William Dafoe. Uh, gosh. Like if, if he becomes the Norman Osborn of the MCU, Ooh. I will be so thrilled because Absolutely. he even now aged more. I think it's a better fit. Uh, more so than a younger Norman Osborn. So I love Willem Dafoe. He was fantastic uh, in the original Spider-Man film. Um, so yeah, I, I really can't wait to see what they do with this. Um, he better be in the iconic Green Goblin costume if yeah. he is going to suit up. But just having him as the overarching Norman Osborn of Oscorp, like we haven't seen that in the MCU yet. So maybe Oscorp bought the old Avengers Tower. Wow. That would be really cool. So they it's going to go one of two ways. It's either Oscorp or the Baxter building, right? Yeah. So it's going to be one of the two. So the fact that they're bringing this in, oh man, and I was just telling Matt before this, if we get Vincent D'Onofrio as Kingpin, <laughs> I mean, just... Am I the only one who wants James Franco back? <laughs> no, I would love that so too. So bad. But like, you bring Norman Osborn and Kingpin into the MCU, I'm I'm good. I'm you're good. good. Calling it. Uh, I can tell Matt, you're chomping at the bit to tell us <laughs> your thoughts on this, on everything. What you got for us? So I'm going to start off by talking about the Tom stuff. First of all, Tom's capping here, guys. There's a reason why we're, we're, me and Brad are wearing caps out here because that's all Tom's throwing our way. He's The man is capping. As it is, I'm surprised. I'm surprised he got through this interview <laughs> without spoiling something from the damn yeah, movie. Did. Yeah, proud of him. The, the, like if you watch the interview, he almost spoiled the ending of the movie when the interview asked the, the, when the interviewer asked him what the ending of the movie was. So like props to Tom because you know I've always said it that like it's gonna be so amazing to see Tom Spidey grow from being you know this young kid to being an adult over the course of Spider Man's journey in the MCU. But it's been amazing to see Tom Holland grow from being this like young, spoiler filled, bl blabbermouth <laughs> to being like a very young, mature, you know, still blabbermouth, but like just keeping it, keeping it under control. So Tom is capping here. There's no way this is the most ambitious standalone superhero film of all time without the likes of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, especially when their villains are being spotted on set. Alfred Molina is already confirmed for this movie. Jamie Foxx is already confirmed for this movie. Willem Dafoe was spotted on set. And we know that now in the production schedule is when they're filming all of the major stuff. They're not filming, you know, out in the spotlight in the middle of Atlanta where you could take pictures and that's where we get set photos. Now is when they're filming behind closed doors and all the major scenes are being filmed. So when I hear a report that Willem Dafoe has been spotted on set, makes sense because now is when they're filming all the major stuff. Also, I, mean, I don't know if it's it's I don't know if it's been confirmed or not, but Brad, we talked about this a bit. Andrew Garfield low key got leaked on Postmates. 
<laughs> like the man ordered Postmates <laughs> and you, in order to order Postmates, you need identification because if you're, you know, ordering liquor, they need, they need identification. So Andrew Garfield might've gotten leaked already and he's in Atlanta. I wouldn't be surprised at this point, but again, this cannot be the most ambitious superhero film of all time. That's, I love how you just slide that in there. Like it's not a, a huge thing. That's amazing. It's like, also, what you drinking? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a tequila girl a myself. A Andrew, I mean, <laughs> leave it to Andrew. It, it has to be one of them, you know? Can I be his friend? <laughs> it has to be one of them. That's so great. But oh yeah, my gosh. This can't be the, the most ambitious standalone superhero movie without Toby and Andrew. Their villains are already in the movie. We know that. So again, because Marvel's because this is chapter two in Marvel's multiverse saga, there's no way they're not in this movie. We're just waiting on announcements. Told him, do you think someone told him to say that quote about the movie, or do you think he's just like pumping it up on his own? Like he truly believes this. Oh, I think That's they gave I, I think they gave Tom the script to this interview, and he's been practicing this in, for this <laughs> interview for weeks. That's what I think. That's good. Okay, I like that because then uh, and, you know, <laughs> from the studio. <laughs> and, and and to to touch on his, you know, oh, I don't know anything about Toby and Andrew's involvement. I'm gonna pull a line from uh, Endgame. Oy. Of oh. course, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Stopper. beautifully said all right <laughs> let's slide it into the next topic i feel like you just wrapped it up with a beautiful bow so we got to move on it's just been reported earlier today that sony has formally offered keanu reeves the role of craven the hunter in his own solo movie this is big news and it's just breaking for us today what are your thoughts on this potential of craven being played by keanu brad we'll start with you does this mean we're not getting Craven in Spider-Man 3? Yeah. That's my first question. I feel um, like they could do both. They could throw him in there. Yeah. But, I, uh, you know, I love Keanu. I think he's amazing. I think this is a, a wasted role for him. Um, I, it's just not big enough. I mean, I was talking to Matt about this last week. Imagine Keanu Reeves as Mephisto. Oh, my like, God. That is a holy crap casting. Um, and hopefully one that lasts longer than one story, right? So I, I just, I don't see it. I also feel like Craven is more of a Jason Momoa kind of Ooh. age build, like that kind of, you know, no offense to Keanu. I just don't look at Craven like that. Uh, I, I think he's a younger, fitter, in his prime kind of thing. Yeah. So um, I, I just, it, it, it it came out of left field for me. Well, they um, said it was going to be like a Logan style yeah. movie. So, so that's I, where like the I older age I was thinking possibly could work, but yeah. I'm with I you mean, on that. Keanu, Keanu would make it work, but I just like Craven is a, is a waste in my opinion for his talents. I, I just don't think it's a big enough role. Um, quality of character for the likes of Keanu Reeves. That's just my opinion. Keanu would kill it one way or another, but I, I would save him for some iconic role. Matt, what do you think? So I'm not surprised by these reports. I mean, if we look at the castings that Sony has made, Tom Hardy as Venom, Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. So when I hear that they're pursuing Keanu Reeves as Craven the Hunter, I'm not surprised because they've already casted A-list actors for Michael not, necess not necessarily, mm -hmm. you know, Venom, Mysterio, those aren't starters. Those aren't big players that are the face of the MCU or the, the universe. So I'm not surprised by these reports, but again, I, I'm, I'm with you, Brad. Like, dude, like I would love to see Keanu as an Adam Warlock, as a Namor, as a Mephisto. Like when I think of Keanu Reeves as a Dr. Doom, I think like this man is box office. Yeah. This 100%. man isn't, you know, a Spider-Man side villain that, that teams yeah, up in the Sinister Six. Character. Yeah. This is a guy that has the potential to be the next Thanos, to be the next Josh Brolin. So 100%. again, and, and on top of that, it's not even about like the character he's playing. You know, Keanu is just the brand of Keanu Reeves. People show up to see Keanu Reeves movies just to see Keanu Reeves do yeah. what he does best. So would he kill it as Craven? 1000%. But in my head, I think of Craven as like some beast, just like 
like like a again like a Jason Momoa, Joe yeah. Maganello, like just a beast, just specimen, and physical specimen. Yeah, Keanu Reeves is is you know he's on the back end. He's like m- more much older, so I don't know how that would fit into him playing the role. But again, I'm not surprised by these reports, and I would love to see Keanu Reeves play a bigger role within the future of the MCU. Kevin Feige has talked about Keanu Reeves in the, in the past. Marvel has offered him multiple roles in the past before. And Kevin Feige has said that it's only a matter of time before they get Keanu. It's just a matter of looking for the right role. Wolverine Ghost is Rider. another role. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Good Ghost call Rider. on that one. Ghost Love Rider, that. Wolverine, Adam Warlock, Namor, Mephisto. Like there's so many different types of characters. Silver Surfer. There's a yeah. plethora wow. of characters Whew. for them to yeah. choose from. And, Man, Craven. and you answered my question. Cra- I was Craven just going to ask you who one of those else characters. <laughs> yeah, I I totally agree with you guys. I think this is beautifully said. It's exciting to hear his name in the mix anywhere, <laughs> but you are completely correct. Uh, they could definitely find a role that would be more than just a one-off film. Don't, and maybe don't force like a little it. cameo. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it, we, Disney and Marvel have been desperately trying to get him in something for yeah. the longest time. Like I literally had a conversation about this yesterday with someone, and then this morning we find out that they offered him Craven. I'm just like, you're trying too hard. Like it, it'll happen when it's supposed to happen, but don't force it because once he's Craven, he can't turn around and be Silver Surfer or Ghost yeah. Rider or something like that. So, I mean, this isn't a, a Fox shared kind of thing anymore <laughs> where he can, you know, Chris Evans can be somebody else and then Captain America, you know, Johnny Bla- yeah. or um, Johnny Storm. So it's just like one of those things where you're just like, oh, come on. Like, uh, I don't know. We love Keanu, I, I, look, but uh, yeah, no. Keanu's, Keanu's incredible as John Wick, like yeah. incredible, but that makes sense for him. Mm-hmm. Like that, that's a perfect role for him. I yeah, just, I liked him as Constantine a lot. Yeah, I, I, that's, and, and, my and that's where the Mephisto, the Mephisto kind of thing kind mm-hmm. of stirs for me. Do you I guys see he, him as a villain? Like, would you rather see him casted as a villain or as a hero? I, I would, have a preference, I, I, to be honest. I don't, yeah, I don't have a preference. I just want it to be major. You know, like Christian Bale right. is playing Gore the God Butcher. Christian <laughs> Bale? <laughs> Excuse me? Christian Bale. Is playing Gore the God Butcher, the villain of Thor, <laughs> Love, and Thunder. So, like, I don't have a preference, but I would love to see him in multiple major movies. Like, I would want to see him play a major role in these films, whether it's good or bad. That's awesome. Well, speaking of really big moments, we got a really big moment during the Super Bowl. <gasps> Thank goodness. We got a brand new spanking trailer for Falcon Winter Soldier is released during the Super Bowl. And we're just going to jump right into it. Thoughts on the entire trailer. What do you think, Brad? I can't wait. This looks like just a buddy film. Just like these two guys running around, having an adventure. And it's just the typical action adventure mcu content that we love um their relationship is so dynamic because it's so volatile at times but they balance each other out so well you know bucky's so chill calm reserved you know we know falcon is over the top (laughs) egomaniac hilarious so it just it's a good fit and we saw that dynamic displayed in this trailer and uh, the staring contest, the you just got your ass kicked comment, like just just so funny. And he's going to be constantly getting under Bucky's skin in this film or film in the series. So I really can't wait to just dive into the adventure elements of, you know, obviously they're dealing with Zemo and kind of the fallout from Endgame and Cap's retirement and things like that. So there's just a lot of stuff that they're going to be juggling and dealing with seeing obviously falcon throw the shield seeing him with the shield but also seeing bucky with the shield uh they were playing frisbee we're not, with it <laughs> yeah may, maybe we we're not gonna get you know the the captain america everybody's assuming so i'm very intrigued to see kind of what surprises this show has for us but i couldn't be more excited i mean that was a, a blast from start to finish yeah, I felt like uh, you kind of nailed it by calling it a film because it it played out like a film. It looked like a film trailer. That's how beautifully it was done. And uh, I'm very excited about it. What do you think, Matt? So at this point, you know, by the time this episode of Soup's, Soup's Disputes come out, you guys would have seen my interview with Aaron Tony. He was the stunt double for Falcon 
in this Falcon and the Winter Soldier series. And he talked a bit about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And he described this film as both of you describe what we saw from this trailer. This series is going to be many movies. Ooh. WandaVision is structured where the episodes are 25 to 30 minutes long. Now they're getting a bit longer, but no. This series for Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to be six episodes, and each episode is going to be a mini movie. And that's what we saw in this trailer. We saw high-quality, intense action from beginning to end. And ultimately, at the center of it, of it all, lies just the chemistry between Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan. And I could not be more excited to see this series. This trailer, to be honest, we didn't see anything in this trailer. Let's be real. The majority of the shots we saw from this trailer were, is stuff we've seen before in other TV spots, in other trailers. But... This trailer just doubled down on what we've already seen in the past, which was yep. high level action and just more like buddy cop moments, more comedic mm -hmm. moments. Sam and Bucky at couples therapy. That the that line at the end, that line at the end. <laughs> that little girl really kicked your ass. Oh, it just <laughs> so good. It, it just it looks so fun. And worse the fact that this premieres a week after WandaVision, like it's just ridiculous how much Marvel is really taking over this game because these, these Disney plus series, it's just a whole nother level game changer. Yeah, it is. So oh, the biggest surprise for me in that uh, trailer was Sharon Carter. Uh, yeah. She came out with a bang and she was kicking butt. So, you know, she really looked like black widow to me, like Ooh. just totally wrecking people. So I'm excited that she's getting her light to shine, d diving more into her character, her background. You know, we only saw her for a short time in civil war. Right? right. And she went up against Bucky, a super soldier. So not only did black widow get her ass kicked, but Sharon did as well. So to see her go toe to toe against some regular humans, uh, I think she's going to, take him to the cleaners and we saw that in the trailer so i'm excited to see more of her uh kind of hear where she's been since civil war um she went dark obviously after everything kind of went down and you know is she with sword is she with the fbi is she rogue like who knows so to to have more of her character background same with zemo and then just the surprises that we're going to get in this show uh of how it's going to expand the mcu even further with characters and storylines maybe locations there's just so much there that i think they're going to tap into to to move the story along um and then ultimately we're going to find out who is the next captain america yeah. um so you know i i find it hard to believe that we're not going to see steve at some point in the series, uh, um, unless something happened since Endgame, dude, uh, there was gosh. some there was some shots in this trailer where it just it makes you think that his funeral takes place in at but, some but point that, in the show. But, but is it a is it a funeral just to kind of Captain America was killed in Endgame, which I think they said in Far From Home, if I'm not mistaken, in that intro video where they mm -hmm. went and they showed the people who died, Tony, yeah. Black Widow, etc. Mm -hmm. Cap was among that group. So maybe that's how they're covering up his story and letting him go on to live his life as old cap. Right. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense to me, but still, if he is alive, I just don't know how you don't have him involved in this show at any capacity, just for Sam to have that soundboard. Same with Bucky. I mean, he's such a pivotal part of this story. He has to be involved at some capacity. Like I, he has to be cited at some point. <laughs> and you have oh, to there's going to be a ton of the... Captain America references in this series. I mean, oh, to yeah. not, not even just like, I don't even think they have to show him and I don't know if we will see him, but I think the same, the same importance that Tony Stark played in Spider-Man Far From Home. And he played a huge role in that movie is the yeah. same way Captain America is going to play a role in this series. Yeah, you have to think about all the cameos that could possibly be coming in. I feel like the whole thing about WandaVision is all of these cameos are just throwing people from different projects in this like every episode you're like oh my Seven gosh years. and so it almost makes me wonder are they going to even do that are they going to throw a bunch of cameos on or is it self-standing like I feel like because of their chemistry and this storyline I feel like they almost don't need a bunch of people popping in to check on them um yeah, during yeah they time. certainly don't need it but it's, it's going to happen because yeah. Marvel is going to be Marvel and they're just going to go over yeah. the top. We already know War Machine is in this series. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Yelena or mm -hmm. someone from like, that's going to appear in the Hawkeye show appear in this series. But 
Yeah, Marvel just just they do such a great job in just keeping that connectivity factor across all of these different projects. So even though the show is self standing, the same way WandaVision is is self standing really because yeah. we could just sit down and watch Elizabeth Olsen and Paul Bettany go back and forth in a single yeah. living room and we could be entertained. I mean, they've proved that already already with WandaVision, but going into the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We already know we're going to be entertained with these two. They could again. We saw it in the trailer. They're literally sitting in a room right next to each other in a couples therapy setting, and it's just the most hilarious <laughs> thing in the world. It's so it's, great. It's All they petty. need. To- it's yes. so petty, and I love so it. <laughs> All they need to do is just bring. They gave Thor his long hair back. Can they please give Bucky his long hair back? That's my only request. Right. I right. love him. Nah, I new like identity. Hair. New hair. New identity. <laughs> All right. Speaking of new identities, let's move it on. Spoilers ahead. This is a full discussion and breakdown of WandaVision episode five. So if you're tuning in, thank you for listening, but you really need to watch this episode because it's awesome. (laughs) Um, I feel like we should just start it off with the overall feeling it gave you watching this episode because it was a huge episode. Brad, what do you think? The the best episode by far, so far. Um, it was just fast paced. It was exciting. The action in it, uh, which we haven't really had a ton this whole show. So it you can really feel the tension and the pace of this show picking up, which is what kind of what they said. They said the last three episodes are going to be out of this world nonstop action. Well, we have one more episode until that takes off. Yeah. So I think next week is going to take it to another level. And even end on some type of extra cliffhanger from an action standpoint where it's going to tease that the last three episodes are just going to blow the doors off this whole thing. Um, Seeing Scarlet Witch for the first time. uh, And I say that because whoever came out of that pocket reality was not Wanda. Um, She came out and that first shot when she came out in her endgame outfit, she looked pale. She looked emotionless. She had no empathy. She looked like she was just soulless. Like she had she the just, accent. Yeah, and she and not only the accent, but the accent was the strongest it's been. Yeah. So it, it it was not the balance of of Wanda and Scarlet Witch like we saw in Age of Ultron. It skewed the whole other yeah. direction. So she is full blown Scarlet Witch at this point, and I think she proved that by a little flick of the wrist, and she turned everybody on. Hayward and it's uh you know I I love that I love that character development we've kind of talked about the rumors before about this is an internal struggle with Wanda this is Wanda versus Scarlet Witch and and I think we've talked about this that vision is the embodiment of good Wanda this is her good conscience because vision's dead like we know that Mm -hmm. unless there's some unique storyline that obviously we'll find out one way or another but like if you look at it that way, it's it's her, Scarlet Witch, going up against Wanda, the good inside her. Like, we shouldn't be doing this. We should leave Westview. We shouldn't take control of a whole city. And she's like, no, 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 no. Like, it, it's, it's just very unique in those elements of, okay, maybe this is how she brought him back, you know? And now she's losing the reins of, of this pocket reality. And uh, I think next episode is that, uh, Halloween episode that we've seen in the trailers. And I think it's really going to get crazy because we've seen that Agnes tells Vision that he's dead. And that is going to break the camel's back because that's the one thing that Wanda didn't tell him. What aren't you telling me? What aren't you telling me? I don't remember my life since before we came here. Yeah, You're dead. That's why. you know. So I think that is when he, you see that epic shot of him flying high above Westview. I also think that's when he tries to go through the border. And I think that's where we may get that tease of the battle between Scarlet Witch and Vision. And I don't think Vision's going to win that. Let's yeah. just be real. Yeah. So that tells me, once again, if it's Wanda versus Scarlet Witch, Scarlet Witch beats Wanda. That's who she is moving forward. And I think that is the craziest just brilliance of this show of how they've just made this mystery and 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 this horror element of this show and it's still uh, you know we're sitting here spitballing but i guarantee you we're wrong about a lot of stuff oh yeah and that's the crazy thing so obviously the big reveal quicksilver showing up supposedly evan peters 
showing so up. Crazy. Um, once again, we don't have any background on on if he is Quicksilver until I see him use his abilities. He's just a guy that is played by Evan Peters, who right. resembles his X Men character as well as Pietro from Age of Ultron. So. I don't know yet. There's a lot of weird things. We can go into detail about the whole mirror sequence, but there's just so much good stuff from this show. And, you know, obviously diving deeper into Monica's backstory. uh, I think it's safe to say that she has abilities now from her scans that she got back from the doctor. Did that happen when Wanda threw her out of the reality? I think so. I think when she crossed through that barrier with Wanda's energy around her, I think that kind of maybe, uh, activated that mutant gene uh which i think they're going to dive into as well so yeah. th- there's just so much good stuff i could talk about it for days yeah there's Matt, a lot of information think? yeah Matt, fill us in what did you catch so before i get to breaking on the actual <laughs> episode man this episode for me made history like honestly <laughs> like it's been so long since we've been in a setting where we can genuinely like just like nerd out and just express our passion and our energy. I mean, the last time I really remember doing that was being in those theaters for Avengers Endgame. But I felt that with this episode and I was in a room by myself. I mean, we may, we may, we may have been on a live stream with like 5,000 of you guys and that was pretty <laughs> awesome. But the reality of it is that I'm sitting here in my room by myself at three in the morning And I feel like I'm in a jam-packed theater with thousands of fans reacting to something that's pretty damn amazing. And I want to give props to Marvel for just giving us that experience because I know I wasn't the only one that felt that way when I watched this episode. And this episode, again, like Brad said, the best by far. It's not even close. And it just, they continue to elevate this show to a whole nother level with every single episode. I do think this Friday is going to be the Halloween episode. And for those of you guys who want to tune into our live watch party, we're going to be dressing up. It's Halloween. It may be January, but guess what? In WandaVision, it's Halloween. So we're going to be dressing up, <laughs> celebrating Halloween on the watch party for episode six. And judging off of this episode and just reviewing the episode overall, this is Scarlet Witch. She's here. Wanda is no more. And I loved Vision so much in this episode. You know, we got a ton of weird moments with Agnes, with, uh, not Herb, with Norm. Norm. With Norm. Wanda at the hair. end. Vision was so amazing in this episode. And I continue to, like, love Vision more and more with each episode because he's not afraid to call out Wanda on her BS. And we know in this Halloween episode, he's going to do the same thing once again because he's not stopping until he, he gets the truth of what's really happening. And Deep down, he just wants to set things right. I think with this series, they've really humanized Vision. Even though we know Vision is dead, now with the Vision we see here, he's so much more humanized. He's not an emotionless, uh, an emotionless, unless robot with like no feelings. He he cares about people. He cares about Norm. Yeah, exactly. He cares about making sure Wanda is doing what's right in honor of him after his death. So like. I love this episode from beginning to end. There's a ton of interesting things going on with the kids, how Wanda can't control the kids. I think there's definitely ties to the kids being, you know, the shards of Mephisto. We're going to see how how that unfolds. But that Evan Peters reveal at the end, first of all, caught me super off guard because I thought it was Agnes at the door. Like, I I did not expect Wanda to open that door and it'd be Evan Peters. Like, we all heard the ramblings of, his him showing up as Quicksilver and we knew he was going to be in the show because he was on the cast list but Mm -hmm. I didn't think they would introduce him this early on in the show like they keep on hyping up these last three episodes episodes seven eight and nine but now it's like you just introduced Evan Peters as Quicksilver how can you get any bigger than this and we don't know at this point if he's Quicksilver to be honest I'm leaning more to the side that he's either related to Mephisto or something like that, something of Mephisto's creation. But again, we're going to have to wait and see how this version of Quicksilver interacts with the kids, interacts more with Wanda and Vision and Agnes. We don't know. And that's the crazy part is that they just give us something. Evan Peters is back and Wanda's recasted him as Pietro. But we don't really know. So that's why they just leave us with these little pieces of information and it just... (laughs) We just get so hungry over the course of these next seven days. And now this Friday, we have a new episode and we're going to get to see him interact with the kids, with Agnes, with other members of the town. 
And I'm so excited to see all of the different Easter eggs Marvel's going to throw in this episode because I swear to God, if I see a little kid trigger trading in like a Wolverine outfit, I'm oh going to lose it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lose it. Like the Easter eggs are going to be insane. So I'm just super excited for that. But oh. again, they're taking the show to a whole nother level with each episode. And they, they did that exactly with this episode. Yeah, it actually feels kind of emotional from my standpoint because I'm starting to kind of pick up on her struggle. Like when they did show the security footage of her going in and getting Vision's body, I was Epic. not looking at her as a villain or a terrible person. I was going, heck yeah, she should go in there. They're ripping him apart and testing on him. And they, they have no reverence to his dead body. Like how, if someone did that to my partner, like that's un uncalled for, like they, that's totally wrong. And now I'm like, I'm really on her side. Like, I, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they were doing that to begin with. And then even with the dog dying, which is also, that mm -hmm. dog is a reference to the comics. Uh, there's like yep. a comic about this dog and, um, you know, Agnes clearly killed that dog. <laughs> like, oh, can yeah, we just sure, bro. talk about for this? Sure. Like, I think the dog She's uncovered something. The yeah. Well, I think the dog uncovered something. I think that he did find something. If you read the comic, I don't want to spoil too much in case that has something to do with it. But if you have read the comic, the dog does dig up something that can create um, like memory recovery. And it, if that really did happen, you know, that could have unveiled something to the dog, which in turn could have been unveiled to Wanda and or one of the kids because one of the kids might have the same powers that Wanda does. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a lot of little really beautiful, fun Easter eggs and call to like comics. And that's what I think I love so much about the show is they are not yeah. negating the comic aspect and all these little ties and beautiful like tidbits from these previous works um, of Wanda and Vision. So I'm, I'm obsessed with it. I think it's amazing. One question, who do you guys think Rambo was texting about the, the vehicle to enter the hex? Oh, uh, are, are you talking about the, like the, the neural space engineer? Yes. Yes. Oof. Thoughts. I mean, there's so many different characters it could be. A ton of people are saying Reed Richards. And I think it's Reed Richards. Like, I think this is how they set up Fantastic Four. They already kind of set them up with the last episode by addressing the astronaut situation over at Sword. But there's so many different people it could be. It could be Rhodey. It could be Ray, Ray Williams. It could be Shuri. It could be um, Blue Marvel. It could be, uh, what's his name? Hank McCoy. It could literally be so many different people. But I would like to believe that it's Reed Richards. And after this episode, I actually put Reed Richards in my top three candidates for the Luke Skywalker cameo of this yeah. show. Because, you know, the, the fan casting of John Krasinski as Reed Richards, it, it's the most popular fan casting of all time by far. So, like, if at the end of the show, John Krasin we just see John Krasinski pull up, even though we've never seen Reed Richards in the MCU, if we see John Krasinski, we know that's Reed Richards. So, I think, I think it's Reed Richards. Nice. Brad, do you have any ideas? Yeah, I mean, so I, I've gone into the, the videos and the breakdowns and things. Uh, the one thing I've seen, though, is apparently in the closed captions, it describes this person as a she. Oh. So that was that was detail that obviously I didn't see because I don't watch with closed captions on. Um, that really narrows it. So the, the things that I've seen, obviously Shuri, that make a ton of sense. Yeah. But I think it was EA Voss at uh, New Rockstars who said that her friend in Captain Marvel was a female scroll. Oh my gosh. So it could be, you know, like the scientist. Up. Yeah. Yeah. Like the scientist who helped build and uh, kind of upgrade that Quinjet that they had to go to space, he could, she could have grown up into a brilliant scientist as well. And wow. that's the kind of cool elements that go going back to when she came back to sword talking to Hayward and saying like, you know, he, he made a comment like all oh, new threats in space, da da da. And she was like, yeah, allies as well. So like she could have that relationship with the squirrels still. And of course she was probably talking about Carol as well, but um, in general, you know, if it is a, a, a woman, I think Shuri, I think that would be awesome uh, to, to have a call back to her because obviously she's a badass and insanely smart. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the female scroll would be cool. Um, I don't think she has a name, so we're just going with yeah. that. But, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, if it is a man, I would love it 
to be Reed Richards. And yeah. I was saying that they've been so brilliant. I said this a few weeks ago that we were probably going to see Evan Peters during the timeline of the X-Men movies, which took place in the 80s and the 90s, right? So having him appear in the 80s episode made a ton of sense, right? So the the modern day episodes for WandaVision are shot in the style of The Office. So it would be incredible to have John Krasinski show up when they're shooting the modern day episodes of WandaVision in the style of The Office. And that would just make so much sense as well. So who knows? Uh, I I think that would be a great way to introduce Reed Richards. Uh, I don't know if he's going to be Mr. Fantastic at this point. But once again, these shows give us the opportunity to lay the foundation for new storylines, new characters before we see them in the feature films. And that is what's so game changing about this. And I tweeted after the episode. I just said, what an accomplishment for Disney and Marvel to start off their marvel shows on disney plus with this risky stylistically incredible show like they they could have went the falcon and the winter soldier out where it's like here you go marvel films right but they didn't do that they said we're gonna do something different we're gonna do something so crazy that's gonna blow your mind and guess what it's doing that and more yeah that's awesome and another thing too is the way this episode we got both perspectives and the way that it shifted the perspective from the alternate reality to sword back to the yep. alternate reality. It was just, it was just a masterpiece from the way it was directed from the way it was written. And I think we're going to see more of that again, moving forward. Yeah. There was even like a little bit of a red filter. I saw in one of the videos. If you check the yep. hex reality, there's yeah. like a little yep. bit of like a red filter. I was thinking I Ant, too. team Ant-Man for maybe the texting that because be cool. that little car kind of looked like the little, Ant-Man yeah. car. I don't Ant-Man. know. <laughs> no, no, that makes Probably a ton just of having sense. having too much fun with this. Well, my, my one takeaway from the episode too, we've talked about this for a few weeks now, is like, okay, they had confirmation that Wanda went missing. Okay, fine. Don't call the Avengers yet. Then they had con- confirmation that there's some weird stuff happening. Okay, maybe we should call them. No, no. Okay, fine. When she came out and threatened the lives of everyone and basically said, stay out of my home or I'll kill all of you. Now it's time to call the Avengers because sword agents with guns or drones clearly is doing nothing to slow her down or stop her. And that that's a fact, like that's just not going to help at all. So at this point you have to call in a response. Guns. Yeah. Yeah. You have to like, she's out of control. She just came out and showed her true colors and who she is at this point, which is Scarlet Witch. And she's saying, don't mess with me. I won't mess with you, but I'm still going to take over this town. No. (laughs) So I think in this next episode, there has to be some sort of response team. I think Hawkeye has to show up. I think Captain Marvel has to show up. Dr. Strange is somebody who can go toe to toe with Wanda. Yeah. Which very small group. Okay, like Hawkeye's okay. listed because of his emotional connection mm-hmm. with her. Mm-hmm. But everybody else, Strange and Carol, they could put a, up a good fight. I still think they'd lose, but I still like I think there's a good battle there. Yeah, I love that they talk about her power in this episode, too. For anyone who like isn't doesn't know how powerful she is. Yeah. Rambo flat out says she could have taken down Thanos. So if yep. you didn't know, now, you know, this this woman is whew, she's strong. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes, and, and like you said, like it's time to call in the big ones. It's time to call in some starters. My predictions after this episode, I think Captain Marvel's for sure showing up after this episode. And what I think they're going to do is I think they're going to bring in Hawkeye, like you said, because that Hawkeye theory is just too good to not be true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna bring in the Hawkeye. They're going to bring in Hawkeye, and they're going to kind of take the, all right, let's give her someone she knows approach. Let's see if they can convince her and talk her out of this. And that's where she blows Hawkeye to smithereens and he loses his hearing. And then they take the approach where it's like, all right, it's time to put her to sleep. It's time to take her out. <laughs> so let's call in Captain Marvel. And then boom, Captain Marvel shows up. And there we, you know, it, when Jimmy Woo mentioned Captain Marvel, Monica, her, her like nostrils flared. Like there's something yeah, going on there happy. with Monica and Captain there's some Marvel. Animosity there. Yeah. And I think Doctor Strange is just going to show up because of the whole multiverse thing and the way she affects the multiverse. And I, I still, still think I've, he's there. I agree with you, Brad, on this. I think he's in there. I think he either tried and he failed oh, yeah. or he's secretly yeah. there doing something behind her back. 
Yeah. And yeah, that, I think you showed up when this reveal, all happened. Guys, we still have that reveal that's going to happen, <sighs> so right? So, I mean, we've seen the vehicle entering the pocket reality. So she is going to get that technology, which is record time, by the way. Like, she texted and it's going to be there, like, tomorrow. <laughs> um, but amazing, nonetheless. But what if that vehicle is not just Monica, but it is Hawkeye? And maybe it is Captain Ooh. Marvel. Maybe she enters with, with them. backup. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I still laugh at Hayward sending in a drone to yeah. kill with Wanda. the Stark Industries logo on it. Yeah. I, I'm you just know like, dude, with? like, and, and that uh, the people are saying, oh, it's Mephisto. It's Mephisto. Mephisto knows you're not going to kill Wanda with a drone strike. So to me, this guy is just an idiot. Or he's a scroll, or one of the two. It's something's fishy about him. Yeah, that's I can't for stand sure. Him. But yeah, I, I, yeah. Well, I liked the editing where uh, Darcy oh. was like, "He's a," he, she's going to say "dick," and it cut to terrorist, terrorist, yeah, out of his mouth. So that was very interesting. So once again, Marvel Disney, they don't do anything on accident for nothing. Yeah, yeah. And it's there for a reason. So I, I'm once again, I can't wait. I mean, uh, I'll be there midnight, <laughs> ready to rock and roll. So uh, the countdown has begun. Yeah. And, and one of the things after this episode that has really just been on my mind was Mark Rambo. That's one of my favorite characters in the whole MC. Agreed. And it's mm-hmm. so crazy because she's not, she hasn't even been like the main character of the show. And from the few episodes that we've really seen Monica be her just like grow into her own character i've fallen in love with this character and she doesn't even have her powers like she yeah. has her powers at this point but she doesn't even know that she has her powers so, she's a captain now too which was captain, a great detail captain yeah. monica rambo yes. and dude i think at the end wanda's gonna like attack the sword agents like she already gave them their warning she's gonna attack these sword agents and when she attacks monica because she has like some extra animosity towards monica for some reason Monica's going to absorb that energy and redirect it at Wanda on accident because th- that's what her powers consist wow. of. And then it'll be like, it'll be like one of those moments where like, like kind of like in the force awakens where like Ray discovers she has powers. And at that point, that is going to be, it's almost going to be like in an end game where cap discovered that he was worthy enough to wield Mjolnir in the middle of battle. Like Monica is going to discover that she has some insane powers in the middle of a battle with Scarlet Witch. And it's going to, I just, I can't stop thinking about that moment. Cause like when we talk about the cameos, like we don't know if that's going to happen. We know Monica discovering her powers. Like it's we know going that's going to happen. happen. Yes. That's so I just, exciting. I can't wait. Cause I love <laughs> Monica so much. My favorite. Oh my her. gosh. I love Monica. All right. Well, I feel like we're, we're at a point where we can wrap this beautifully. Any last thoughts on any of the topics we discussed today? Speechless. Perfect. Can't, Lovely. Can't wait for episode six. Yes. Episode six is on the way, guys. We got that episode six watch party. Show up in your costumes. Show up in your cosplay. Tag us on social media and we'll repost. Let's assemble once again like we did for episode <laughs> and it, for this episode and, and experience something amazing. So with that being said, guys, make sure, make sure to check out Janelle, Brad. All of their content is linked down below of the description of this YouTube video. And if you're on the podcast, make sure to go check them out on social media. Again, Guys, this is a show that's based on a conversation that's meant for the greater community. It's a conversation between us three, but let's have this conversation in the comment sections. Do what the content over there on TikTok. With that being said, thank you guys for watching Soup's Disputes. We look forward to seeing you guys next week. 